Now today we'll learn about the different terms which express the concentration of the solution. Okay, we'll see the different concentration terms for a solution. So before that, let's see what is solution. You know very well a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Okay, homogeneous mixture means a mixture which is same throughout. Okay, like for example, if you take uh, sugar and water, okay, mix it well. That gives you a solution, sugar solution. Okay, and you see the solution is homogeneous. Okay, and you also know that the components of the solution are solute and solvent. Solute plus solvent make up the solution. Okay, and if you are asked what is a, what is the solute, the solute would be the component which is present in lesser amount and solvent would be the component which is present in greater amount. Okay, whichever is in lesser amount, that is the solute, whichever is in more amount, greater amount, that is the solvent. Okay, uh, when you take sugar and water and get sugar solution, sugar is the solute, solvent could be water. Okay, or you can also say uh, the state of the solution would be same to that of solvent. Okay, state of the solution would be same to that of solvent. Uh, like example, sugar is the solute, solvent is water. Water is what? Liquid. And when you mix this two, the solution would be sugar solution. And that the state would be liquid again. Okay, so the state of the solution would be same to that of the solvent. Also, you can see. Okay, and another thing, solvent, always there is only one component. But solute, we can take more than one. Okay, one solute or more than one solute. All right, like for example, uh, solvent, we are taking water again. Okay, and solute, I have taken uh, first sugar mix it well okay then again i added um, salt okay again mixed it we get a solution and the solutes we have taken two solutes sugar and salt and solvent was water okay next let's see the term concentration okay concentration simply means what amount of solute is present in the solvent Okay, so concentration means the amount of solute present in a given quantity of solvent of solution is concentration. And there are different ways in which we express the concentration. Okay, so let's see the different concentration terms. The first one we have got here is mass or weight percentage. Okay, mass percentage or weight percentage. I told you in chemistry, mass and weight means the same. Okay, there's no difference. Okay, so mass percentage or weight percentage here can be written as W by W percent. Okay, so mass percentage of the component is defined as the mass of the component per 100 grams of the solution. Okay, let's try to understand this. Mm, mass percentage can be written by weight by weight percent. Okay, suppose you have, you are given... 5% of NaCl. Okay, 5% of NaCl and this percentage is weight by weight percent. Okay, weight by weight percent. It simply means out here 5 grams of NaCl. 5% weight by weight of NaCl solution is given. NaCl solution means aqueous solution of NaCl. Okay, NaCl and water. So 5 grams of NaCl in 100 grams of solution. Okay, see the term here, solution. Okay, not solvent, solution. Okay, 5 grams in 100 grams of the solution. Okay, so 5% weight by weight of NaCl simply means 5 grams in 100 grams. This is also weight, this is also weight. Okay, which means out here, if it is 100 grams of the solution, NaCl is how much? 5 grams. Total solution is how much? It is 100. And what is the solvent here? Solvent is water. So what is the amount of water? It is 95 grams. Okay. So 5 grams of NaCl in 100 grams of the solution. That is weight by weight. Okay. So weight by weight percentage simply tells the amount of solute okay, in grams 
in 100 grams of the solution. Okay, and how do you find weight by weight? We use this formula. Okay, weight by weight percentage, mass of the solid given divided by the mass of the solution into 100. Okay, then another concentration term is volume percentage. Okay, volume percentage, V by B percent. Now, volume percentage is defined as the volume of the component. Volume of the component out here is the volume of the solute. Okay, per 100 parts by volume of the solution. Okay, so next, volume percentage, volume by volume percentage means, suppose you have got 7, okay, what is given? 7% volume by volume of, volume by volume of HCl is given. Okay, HCl solution. It means 7 volume, okay, milliliter of HCl in 100 milliliter of the solution. Okay, this is also volume, this is also volume. So, 7% volume by volume means 7 milliliter of HCl in 100 milliliter of the solution. Here also same thing. Okay, so HCl and water gives you the solution. Okay, so HCl is how much? 7. Total is 100. So, out here it has to be 93 milliliter okay milliliter and uh, what is the formula that we use okay, so uh, volume by volume percent equals to uh, volume of the solid divided by the volume of the solution into 100 okay then next we have got weight by volume percentage now it is weight Divided by volume. Amount of solute in grams present in 100 milliliter of the solution. Out here, volume. Here, mass. Here, volume. So, finally, the third one. We have got weight by volume percent. Suppose you have got 5%. Okay. Weight by volume um, percent of NaCl. Again, NaCl solution is given. It means that. First is what? Weight. So, 5 grams of NaCl in 100. Next is volume. Milliliter of solution. Okay. In 100 milliliter of the solution. That is the meaning. Okay. So, next. Weight by volume percent. You can find it out by mass of the solid divided by volume of the solution into 100. Okay. Then, the next concentration term is parts per million okay parts per million so it and um, it can be written as ppm ppm means parts per million it is defined as a number of parts of a component of the solute per million parts of the solution okay it simply means how many parts the solute forms when the solution is million okay so PPM of the component would be mass of the component divided by total mass of the solution. Okay. Mass of the component divided by total mass of the solution into 10 to the power 6. Here, 10 to the power 6 is what? Million. 1 million is 1 and 6 zeros. Yes and no. So, into 1, 10 to the power 6. Okay. Parts per million. Out here, percentage. Yes and no. Weight by volume percentage. That is why out here percent means what? Out of 100. So into 100. Here parts per million into 1 million. Okay, that is 10 to the power 6. Okay. And this unit is used for solution which contains solid to an extremely small extent. If the solid is present in very little amount, we use this parts per million. Okay. Um, if uh, this component is four parts five parts in million parts of the solution okay that's very less yes or no uh, we use this concentration terms for those kind of solution okay where the solute is very very less okay like for example here the concentration of poisonous gases in polluted air is also expressed in ppm ppm is your parts per million okay then next we have got now um, 
numerical we have got have a look what is there a sugar solution is 10 percent weight by weight okay find weight by volume if the density of the solution is 1.2 grams per milliliter okay so the question out here is there is a sugar solution sugar solution sugar solution and it is 10 percent 10 percent weight by weight okay so the solution 10 percent weight by weight is given you have to find out you have to find out weight by volume percent weight by volume percent okay and density is given and density is given okay density of the solution is given density of the solution is 1.2 grams per milliliter okay so you are given sugar solution uh it's weight by weight percent is 10 percent okay what does this mean sugar solution 10 percent means 10 grams of sugar in 100 weight this is weight by weight no 100 grams of solution okay then what we have to find out weight by volume what is the formula for uh, finding out the weight by volume percent okay weight by volume percent how do we find out is equals to mass of solute divided by volume out here volume of solution into 100 yes this is the formula we use now let's see mass of the solid have you got the mass of the solid yes it is 10 grams okay it's given out here 10 grams into 100 now volume of the solution is volume of the solution given no so we have to find out the volume of the solution first now have a look what is given out here mass of the solute is given out here this is mass of solution is given which is 100 grams okay mass of solution is given we have to find volume of the solution mass is given we have to find volume and what is given out here density of the solution is also given density of solution is given how much is it 1.2 grams per milliliter okay so from these two can we find out the volume of the solution yes because density equals to mass per unit volume yes or no mass per unit volume is density which is 1.2 mass is how much 100 okay and we have to find out volume so we have got uh, volume would be equal to 100 divided by 1.2 yes we got the volume put the value here and find out the weight by volume percent okay that is how we do Okay, so we have got okay see we found out the volume we put the value out here then we got the answer as 12 percent okay then another one another question we we have got is a solution a sugar solution is 10 percent weight by volume okay weight by volume this much you have to find weight by weight now and the density is given okay try to do this by yourself now the next concentration term is mole fraction okay mole fraction in simple words would be fraction expressed in moles okay uh, i hope you know fraction how to find out the fraction okay um let's take okay one around okay a pizza okay suppose you have got one whole pizza and it is divided into four parts it is divided into four parts now the dotted one okay what fraction is this this is one divided by how many total parts are there one two three four one fourth this fraction is one fourth this portion is one fourth yes or no suppose here this portion how much is this one it is one two three parts divided by whole is four three fourth fraction yes 
This is how we find out the fraction. Okay. Now, let's see the fraction in terms of moles. Suppose you have got a solution. Okay. And the components are A and B. Okay. Suppose A is the solute, B is the solvent. A solution is there, two components, A and B. Okay. Suppose out here, number of moles, number of moles of A is, let's take one, number of moles of B is 3. Okay, number of moles of A is 1, B is 3. Okay, now let's find out the mole fraction of A, component A. How do you find out? Number of moles of A divided by number of moles of a plus number of moles of B. Okay, that would be equal to number of moles of A is how much? 1. Number divided by number of moles of A is 1 plus number of moles of B is 3. That is 1 divided by 1 plus 3, 4. Okay, so this is how we find out mole fraction. Okay, as you can see, simple, no? It's the fraction expressed in moles or the moles expressed in fraction okay so have a look mole fraction of a well, how do you find out number of moles of a divided by total number of moles there are two components so total number of moles is 1.1 plus 3 okay now if you have to find out the mole fraction of b mole fraction mole fraction of b Okay, that would be equal to number of moles of B is how much? 3 divided by total number of moles, 1 plus 3. That is 3 by 4. Okay, simple thing. That is how we find out the mole fraction. Okay, and mole fraction, it is represented by the letter this X. Okay, zeta. It is called zeta. Okay, we can write it as zeta A means the mole fraction of A. Zeta B means the mole fraction of B. Okay, then mole fraction of A, let's take out here, zeta A, can be written like this. Zeta A equals to, in the numerator, number of moles of A, number of moles can be represented by N. Okay, number of moles in A, divided by number of moles of A plus number of moles of B. Okay, then zeta B, mole fraction would be number of moles of B. Divided by number of moles of A plus number of moles of B. Okay, that is how we find out the mole fraction. Okay, and always now have a look. If you add up all the fractions that make up this pizza. Okay, here, two fra here this portion and dot portion and the lined portion. If you add it up, how much you'll get? Always you'll get one. Okay, similarly, if you add up all the mole fractions of the components, there are two mole fractions, two components are there, A plus B always equals to 1. But you are not. Now suppose, okay, you have got three components now, A, B and C. Okay. So out here, mole fraction, zeta A, would be equal to what? Number of moles of A divided by the total number of moles now how many components are there three components are there so number of moles of a plus number of moles of b number plus number of moles of c how do you find out for mole fraction of b zeta b equals to number of moles of b divided by number of moles of a plus number of moles of b number of moles of c zeta c Number of moles of C divided by number of moles of A plus number of moles of B plus number of moles of C. And I hope you know how to find out the number of moles. How do you find out number of moles? Simple thing, given weight by molecular weight. Okay, so as you can see out here, mole fraction would be the moles expressed in fraction. Okay. So here mole fraction is the ratio of the number of moles of one component to the total number of moles of the substances in the solution. Okay or not? Then you have got one question. Have a look. Aqueous NaOH solution contains 80 grams of NaOH and 90 grams of water 
find the mole fraction of NaOH and water. Okay, so you are given NaOH and water. Okay, a solution has got two components, NaOH and the other one is water. So have a look, two components, NaOH is there and water is there. Okay, and weight of NaOH given is, weight of NaOH is 80 grams. Weight of water is how much? Weight of water is 90 grams. Okay, you have to find out the mole fraction of NaOH. We have to find out zeta NaOH, mole fraction, zeta H2O. In order to find out the mole fraction, first we need to know the number of moles of NaOH and water. Okay, so how do you find out the number of moles of NaOH? Number of moles equals to given weight by molecular weight. Given weight is how much? 80. Molecular weight, you can you know how to find out. Na is 23 plus 16 plus 1. Okay, it adds up to 40. So number of moles is 2. Similarly, here also you can find out um, number of moles, that is N, water. Number of moles given weight is 90. Molecular weight of water is how much? 2 plus 16, 18. Okay, 5. All right, so after you find out the number of moles, you can easily find out the total number of moles and from here you can easily find out the mole fraction. Mole fraction of NaOH, number of moles of NaOH divided by total. For water, number of moles of water divided by total number of moles. Now let's learn another concentration term which is called molarity. Okay, molarity. So molarity, it is expressed with the help of the letter M. Okay, molarity M. Now, molarity is, it is the number of moles, number of moles of solute, number of moles of the solute in one liter of the solution. So, what is molarity? Molarity would be the number of moles of the solute in one liter of the solution out here. Okay, solution. And the unit of molarity out here is moles per liter. Okay, moles per liter. Okay, so molarity, I can write it as molarity, capital letter M, would be equal to what? Number of moles of solute divided by volume of the solution in liters. Volume of the solution in liters yes so molarity from the definition i can write number of moles of the solute divided by volume of the solution in liters okay now here have a look number of moles of solid what can we write for this one number of moles would be given weight by molecular weight so i can write this as given weight of solute okay usually it's given in grams divided by molecular weight of solute okay into what is out here volume of solution in liters yes i can express it in this way also okay then another one have a look Volume the solution in liters, mainly the solution for numerical calculation. It is given in milliliter. So let's change this into milliliter. So we'll get given weight of what? Solute divided by molecular weight into out here volume of solution. Volume of solution in what? Milliliter. Let's change this liter to milliliter. Okay, so what we have to do out here, 1000. Yes, I know we're changing liter to milliliter. So, divided by 1000. Okay, so this is the formula that we'll be using to find out the molarity. Given weight divided by the molecular weight of the solute into 
1000 divided by volume of the solution in milliliter. Okay, so these are the different formulas used to express, used to calculate molarity. Okay, have a look. Okay, so these are the different ones. And out here, the last one out here, um, now take this weight of the solute in grams divided by volume of the solution in liters can be written as strength of the solute in gram per liter divided by what is the molecular weight of the solute. Okay, so these are the different ways in which we can express molarity. Okay, these are different formulas we can get. Okay, so the one to remember is this one that we'll be using for the calculations. Molarity would be equal to given weight of the solute divided by molecular weight into 1000 divided by volume of the solution in milliliter. Okay, you remember this one, memorize this. Okay, and what is what was molarity? Molarity would be the concentration term and it is the number of moles of the solute in one liter of the solution. Okay, and one molarity, one M, means what? One M molarity, one molarity means one mole of solute in one liter of solution okay one mole of the solute in one liter of the solution let's take the solute NaOH what is one mole of NaOH one mole of NaOH is, is its molecular mass how much is that 23 plus 16 plus 1 that is 40 so if you have 40 grams of NaOH okay in one liter solution out here is solution, not solvent. In one liter solution, it is said to be one molar solution. One molar solution. Okay, or you can say molality is one. Okay, if you have one mole solute in one liter solution, it is said to be one molar solution. Okay, that is one molarity. Now, suppose if you have two moles in one liter, that means it is two molar. Okay, similarly, if it has got three moles, it will be three molar and all. Okay. So, so that is it. Now, we have got a question. Okay, let's see. Find the molarity of 80 grams of NaOH dissolve in 250 milliliter of the solution. Okay, so you have to find out what? Molarity. Okay, molarity, you have to find out what you are given. You are given 80 grams of NaOH is there. It is dissolved in, dissolved in 250 milliliter of solution. Okay, so this you are given. 80 grams of NaOH is there. It is dissolved in 250 milliliter of the solution. You have to find out molarity. We know molarity. What was the formula? Molarity represented by capital letter M would be equal to given weight, given weight divided by molecular weight of what? The solute into 1000 divided by volume of solution in milliliter. Yes or no? So what is the given weight? Given weight is 80 grams of NaOH. What is the molecular weight? Molecular weight would be, let's find it out here, molecular weight of NaOH. How much is that? 23 plus, same thing again, no? 40. Yes? So 40, molecular weight is 40 into 1000. Volume of the solution is 250. Okay, let's solve this. 41 to 40, 42 to 80. Mm, 250. 1s are 4s are no? 4 twos are 8 molar. What is the molarity? 8 molar. Okay, so that is how we find out the molarity. Then we have got another question. Find the mass of Na2CO3 present. What is this Na2CO3? Sodium carbonate. Okay, present in 150 milliliter of 3 molar solution. Okay, this question you'll do by yourself. Okay, now let's see. I'll just explain you the question. You have got Na2CO3. 
this is the solid sodium carbonate okay you have to find out the mass of Na2CO3 present it 150 milliliter of the solution this is the solution volume of the solution is 150 and you are given molarity so you know this is the formula uh, this is the formula that you'll use Molarity equals to given weight by molecular weight into one, 1,000 divided volume of the solution. You have to find out mass. You have to find out this one. Find the mass of Na2CO3 present, meaning given weight you have to find out. Yes. Uh, then molarity is given, 3 molar. Molecular weight, you can find it out by yourself. Yes. 23 into 2 plus 12 plus 16 into 3. Find out the molecular weight into 1000 divided volume of the solution is also given you have to find this term okay i hope you can do this all right then we have got another term okay it is called molality earlier it was molarity lar this is lal molality okay and it is represented um, by small letter m okay then what is molali molality? Okay, let's write it out here. Now, molality, molality, L-A-L-I-T-Y. Earlier, it was molarity, L-A-L-I-T-Y, molality, represented by the letter small m. Okay, now it is, it is the number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 kg of the solvent okay now what is the definition of molality molality small letter m it is the number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 kg of the solvent okay 1 kg of the solvent solvent okay not solution so have a look if you see molarity, molarity was the number of moles of solute. Molality also number of moles of the solute. But out here, dissolved in 1 liter. This is what? Volume. 1 liter of the solution. And out here is dissolved in 1 kg. This is mass. Okay. 1 kg of solvent. Okay. Solvent. Remember that. Then, 1 kg of the solvent means what? 1,000 grams of the solvent okay so molality we can write it as molality small letter m can be written as number of moles of solute yes divided by mass divided by mass of solvent no this time mass of solvent in kg in kg Okay, or we can write this as number of moles. How can we write given weight by molecular weight of solute? Okay, into mass of solvent in kg. Now, if you want to change this into grams, we'll write given weight by molecular weight yes into mass of solvent in grams so 1000 no kg we are changing into grams okay so this is how we find molarity this one is important okay this one given weight molecular weight into 1000 divided by mass of the solvent in grams okay then one molar solution one molar solution okay one molar solution means what one mole of solute in one kg of solvent so sorry not solution solvent okay so one molar solution molal m solution means one mole of the solid in one kg of solvent. Suppose, for example, one molal solution of NaOH solution. NaOH solution means NaOH, aqua solution, NaOH and water. So it means one mole of NaOH. How much is one mole of NaOH? 
forty grams of NaOH in one kg of what is the solvent? Water. One kg means one thousand grams of water. Okay, so one molar solution would be forty grams of NaOH. That is one mole in one kg of water. Okay, that is molar solution. So we've got a question here. The question is, what find the molality? Okay, we have to find the molality of thirty grams of NaOH dissolved in one hundred grams of okay dissolve in 100 grams of the solution okay this is the question all right so we have to find out the molality so molality you know this is the formula that we use given weight by molecular weight into 1000 mass of the solvent in grams okay so out here molality we have to find out given weight is given of NaOH 30 grams out here then divided molecular weight of NaOH you can find it out into 1000 divided by Mass of the solvent. Is mass of the solvent given? No, but the mass of the solution is given. Alright. Mass of the solution is 100 grams. So from here, can you find out the mass of the solvent? Yes. 100 minus 30 would be the mass of the solvent. So put the values and find out the uh, molality. Okay, so this question, you will do it by yourself. The next we have got another question okay let's try to solve this one so the question is if 0 0.85 okay grams of NH3 now NH3 is what ammonia okay it is dissolved in 100 milliliter of the solution find molality if the density of the solution is 1.2 grams per meter milliliter okay so what we have to find out molality okay so you know that molality how do you find the molality m is given weight by molecular weight into 1000 divided by mass of solvent in grams yes or no this is the formula so let's see what are the things we have given weight given weight is given the weight is given yes what is the uh, solve uh, not solvent solute ammonia out here weight of ammonia is given yes how much is it 0 0.85 okay weight is given divided by molecular weight of ammonia we can easily find out the molecular weight no molecular weight ammonia is how much ammonia is 14 nitrogen is 14 plus hydrogen is 3 into 1 okay 3 hydrogen 14 15 16 17 17 okay so 17 into 1000 divided by mass of the solvent now let's see mass of the solvent is given or not Ammonia given weight is dissolved in 100 milliliter of the solution. What is this milliliter? Volume of solution is given. Okay, 100 milliliter. Mass of the solvent is given? No. So let's find out. Volume is given. Volume of the solution is given. And density is given. Density is how much? 1.26 per milliliter. From volume and density, can we find out the mass? Yes, because density equals to mass per unit volume. It's 1.2 mass equals to 1.2 into what was the volume? 100. Okay, so this is mass of solution. So, um, here's my calculator. So out here, how much did we get? 1.2, 1.2 into 100. Okay, so what is the mass of the solution? Mass of the solution is 120 grams. Okay, but what do we need out here? Mass of the solvent. Okay, so let's find out the mass of the solvent. Mass 
of the solvent VENT solvent the mass of the solvent would be mass of solution minus mass of solute okay so mass of the solution is how much 120 grams and mass of the solvent uh, this one solute is how much 0 0.85 so 20 minus is equals to 119.15 grams okay let's put it 119.15 grams okay so let's solve this one now mm, 0.85 into 1000 divided by 17 divided by 119 point that would be equal to 0 0.419 0 0.4196 okay so molality would be equal to 0.42 molar okay this is the molality after molarity and molality the next concentration term we are going to learn about is normality okay is represented by the letter capital letter n okay but before we do normality we need to know what equivalent weight is eq u i v a l e n t equivalent weight is okay now let's see so here equivalent weight is the combining capacity in terms of weight okay you have seen no valency valency would be the combining capacity of an atom similarly equivalent weight of a compound is the combining capacity combining capacity capacity in terms of in terms of weight okay and you have to know how to find out the equivalent weight equivalent weight weight you can find it out by using molecular weight i hope you know what is molecular weight yes or no gram molecular weight molecular weight or gram atomic weight divided by some factor okay some factor n so equivalent weight is gram molecular weight or gram atomic weight divided by one factor n now what is this factor n n factor can be anything depending upon the compound okay n can be valency okay n can be valency or acidity okay or basicity okay etc n can be anything okay so you need to remember equivalent weight gram molecular weight or atomic weight divided by n factor okay now suppose you're given to find out equivalent weight of an element of an element element any element okay that time what you will do is you'll use the formula equivalent weight of an element would be gram atomic weight gram atomic weight divided by valency like for example if you want to find out for copper okay you have to equivalent weight of copper would be atomic weight of copper whatever is there you write divided by its valency okay copper can have the valency plus one and plus two yes or no okay if the copper is in plus one state then gram atomic weight by one if it is in plus two state it would be gram atomic weight by two okay so that is how you do it suppose if you have to find out equivalent weight of an acid okay that time what we'll use gram molecular weight divided by basicity 
you know that acid will have basicity no basicity means number of replaceable hydrogen in acid acid for example h2so4 you know very well acid will have replaceable hydrogen no this hydrogen can be replaced by metals forming salt yes or no like for example hcl this hydrogen can be replaced okay so if you want to find out the equivalent weight of an acid let's take h2so4 you'll find out the molecular weight of h2so4 you know how to find out 2 plus 32 plus 16 into 4 98 like that yes divided by basicity how many replaceable hydrogens are there 2 so 98 divided by 2 it will be to 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 to 9 49 grams for h2so4 if you want to find for hcl now hcl what is the gram molecular weight of hcl 1 plus 35.5 how much is that? 36.6 divided by what is the basicity? Only one. It has only one replaceable hydrogen. It is 36.6. Okay. So that is how you find out the equivalent weight of acid. Now suppose you have got equivalent weight of base. Okay. You know bases. Yes or no? Like for example, NaOH, CaOH whole twice and all. These are base. They will have OH. Yes, they can give out OH minus ions. So equivalent weight of base, how do you do it? The molecular weight, gram molecular weight, divided by what is the N factor out here? It will be acidity. Acidity. You know that base will have acidity. Acid will have basicity. Acidity would be the number of OH minus ions. So for NaOH, molecular weight divided by acidity. How much is acidity? 1. For CaOH, how much is the acidity? It is 2. Okay, so that is how you find. Then suppose for a salt, okay, equivalent weight of salt would be molecular weight divided by number of positive valency. Okay, number of positive valency. So you have got a salt, for example, mm, NaCl. What is the equivalent weight of NaCl? Molecular weight divided by what is the number of positive valency? Positive valency of metal ions. What is the valency of Na plus 1? So molecular weight divided by 1. Okay, suppose you have got Na2SO4, another salt, sodium sulfate. Molecular weight, you can easily find, divided by number of positive valency of metal. How many are there? Na, there are 2. 1 plus 1, 2. Yes or no? So, number of positive valency will be 2. Okay. So, that is how you find out equivalent weight. Either gram molecular weight or atomic weight. Okay. Depending upon the compound. This is for compound. This is for element. Divided by N factor. And N factor depends upon the different compounds. If you have to find out for the element, you use valency. If you find out for uh, acid, you use basicity. If you find out for base, you use Acidity. Okay, so that is how you do. And out here, uh, the question: Find the equivalent weight of the following. Have a look. I've done for I've done for three examples. One is sulfuric acid, an acid I have taken. So we have to use basicity. Base I have taken um, CaOH, calcium hydroxide. And the so salt I've taken is sodium carbonate. Okay, you go through it. You'll understand. Okay, you'll be able to do. Then finally, we have got the concentration term, normality. Okay, normality represented by the letter N. It is, it is the number of gram equivalent, gram equivalent, equivalent of the solute present per liter of the solution okay so normality it is number of gram equivalent of the solute present per liter of the solution earlier uh, molarity and molality it was the number of moles okay out here is the number of gram equivalent now what is number of gram equivalent okay uh, I've written out here, equivalent weight would be equal to 1 gram equivalent. Okay, 1 gram equivalent would be the equivalent 
weight meaning out here equivalent weight of h2so4 is how much 49 grams okay this is one gram equivalent of h2so4 okay one gram equivalent like for example molecular weight that is molecular weight of h2so4 98 means one mole no similarly uh, equivalent weight it means one gram equivalent if it is two grams equivalent it would be 49 into two okay so uh, normality would be the number of gram equivalent of the solute present per liter of the solution so normality you can write it as number of gram equivalent BAL into of what the solute divided by present per liter of the solution volume of solution in liters yes now number of gram equivalent you can write it as given weight by equivalent eq ui vl weight okay earlier number of moles was given weight by molecular weight number of gram equivalent it is given weight by equivalent weight into volume of solution in liters okay if you want to change it into milliliter you have to divide it by 1000 out here okay so that is the formula we have normality equals to given weight divided by equivalent weight into 1000 divided by volume solution in milliliter okay this is the relation we use for calculation okay and suppose if i ask you one normal solution one normal solution of h2so4 okay one normal solution of h2so4 means one gram equivalent in one liter solution Yes, one gram equivalent of H2SO4 was how much? One gram equivalent was, earlier we found out, 49. So, 49 grams of H2SO4 in one liter solution is one normal solution. Okay or not? Then, we have got a question here. If 1.5... 96 grams of h2so4 are present in 500 milliliter solution find normality okay use this relation find out the normality weight is already given volumes of solution is already given find out the equivalent weight equivalent weight would be the molecular weight divided by basicity since this is acid it is divided by basicity so find out the normality now that we know what molarity is and what normality is, let's see the relationship between molarity and normality. Okay, we'll find out the relation between molarity and normality. Molarity represented by M, normality represented by M, N. We know that molarity is given weight by molecular weight into 1000 divided by volume of the solution in milliliter and normality is given weight by equivalent weight into 1000 by volume of the solution in liters okay so what we are going to do is we are going to divide this equation by this so what we'll get is molarity divided by normality equals to if we divide this by this okay so given weight given weight cancels out 1000 once 1000 also cancels out volume of the solution volume of the solution also cancels out so what is left is molecular weight and equivalent weight okay this divided by this this is in the denominator okay this will go up so we'll have equivalent weight and divided by molecular weight okay so we can write it as molarity let's take normality that side equals to normality into equivalent weight by molecular weight okay this is the relation between molarity and normality molarity equals to normality into equivalent weight by molecular weight okay 
Then finally we have got something called normality equation. Okay, so normality equation it is n1 v1 equals to n2 v2. Okay, suppose um, you have got two uh, reactants. Okay, solution which reacts with one another. Like for example, acid and base. Okay, and suppose uh, the acid, the normality of the acid is N1. Okay, and the volume is V1. Suppose the normality of the base is N2 and the volume is V2. And they are related like this. N1, V1 equals to N2, V2. Okay, and this relation, we use it for titration when we do the practicals. Okay, in titration, basically what we do is, you have, you'll have a solution. Okay, you'll have one solution. Okay, uh, where this one, its normality, the concentration of normality, let's take N1, normality is known. And the volume is also known. These two terms are known. Okay, then you'll be given another solution. Okay, the concentration, the concentration that is normality for this solution you have to find out. Okay, then what you'll do for the titration is you will react this solution and this solution. Okay, and find out how much volume is required for the second solution. You find out this one, you find it out. Okay, when you find out the volume required, the volume, the second solution required, then you use this formula, N1 V1 equals to N2 V2. Okay, this already given, N1 V1 is already given. N2, you have to find it out. V2, you find it out from the experiment. Okay, then you can easily find out the concentration of the second solution. Okay, so titration, basically that is what we do. You are given a solution whose uh, the concentration and the volume is known. Then you'll be given another solution, the concentration of which you have to find it out by reacting these two solutions. Okay, and what we do, you use this relation. Okay, this equation, this is normality equation. N1 V1 equals to N2 V2. Okay, when we do the practicals, you'll understand this better. Okay, for now, just remember N1 V1 equals to N2 V2. Okay, then another thing, another important one here in the book, page number 46. Please mark it in your book. Okay, and also you write it in your copy out here. Uh, here this is therefore molarity normality and formality which involves volume of the solution change with change in temperature okay on the other hand molality and mole fraction are independent or temperature so there this there you know you have seen the concentration terms no some concentration terms depend on temperature okay those who have volume in it you know that volume changes uh, with the change in temperature, it increases or decreases. Yes or no? So, those uh, concentration terms which have volume term in it. Okay, like for example here, molarity, it has got volume term in it. Normality, volume term in it. Yes or no? These concentration terms depend on temperature. With the increase or decrease in temperature, they change. Okay, whereas there are other concentration terms which do not have volume in it, which have just mass in it. Like for example, you have got molality. Molality was what? Number of moles of the solute per 1 kg of the solvent. 1 kg means what? Mass. Okay, only mass terms are there. Okay, so these molality, mole fraction, they do not depend on temperature. So one is temperature dependent. Molarity normality they are temperature dependent concentration terms and molality mole fraction they do not depend on temperature they are temperature independent okay so to express the concentration okay the temperature independent terms it is preferred okay because they do not change with change in temperature that's what written out here okay hence molality and mole fraction are preferred to express the concentration of solutions for accurate work as they are independent of temperature. Okay, so that's it.